Well, hello there. <laughs> Please come in. Welcome to my studio. I'm Sue Bryce and I've been a portrait photographer for 27 years and today I'd like to take you through my studio. I'm currently a New Zealander living in Los Angeles and I've been here for nearly four years. Uh, I opened the studio six months ago and it's almost to where I wanted. Not quite, but pretty close. So we've been working in here since the day we moved in and it's a work in progress, but I wanna take you through what I've set up so far and what else I'd like to do to this space. So this is the first area that you walk into in my space. And I really wanted something reminiscent of a French chateau that I had just visited and shot in this year in April. I was lucky enough to go and work in Paris for five weeks. And the mixture was very ornate French chateau. Um, all of the couches had beautiful lamps. And I based my uh, original room on the salon in the chateau, which I fell in love with. And it was such a beautiful, just a gorgeous, ornate um, room to sit in. It also had a grand piano, which is the only thing that I'm really missing right now. So if you come into my space, this is my main meeting space. Um, I had been collecting gold frames for many years. Uh, some of these came from New Zealand and they're 15 years old. I had been building a collection of gold frames with the idea that one day I would have enough to build a beautiful antique vintage wall. And the chandeliers were just a very lucky find. Um, this beautiful mirror is the centerpiece when you walk into my studio. You know, when I built my very first studio in 2003, uh, I wanted a piece of artwork or really something in my studio that just stopped traffic. And I ended up finding these 200 year old uh, doors from Rajasthan in India and they were really the main piece when you walked into my studio. Uh, I knew that this space was one big space and I didn't have the option to have really beautiful doors. Um, so instead I chose this mirror and this wall. On the wall here is my very first Oliphant backdrop. So this is hand painted by Sarah Oliphant in New York. She hand paints backdrops like nobody I've ever seen before. You know, I dreamed as a young photographer to one day own one of these. I saw Joyce Tennyson shoot on one of these 27 years ago. And I said, one day, one day, I'm gonna own an Oliphant backdrop. The day I bought this, oh my gosh, I actually feel tearful. The day I bought it, I cried. I felt like it was one of those moments when you grow up as a photographer, when you can actually live your dreams. And this is, uh, actually concrete nailed into the wall so it's nice and flat. It doesn't move, it stays here all the time. Um, if I shoot on it, I use natural light or I use the pro photo strobes um, and I just bring them in. It's a remarkable um, canvas and I'm so proud to own it. I'm also now very blessed to have put three more Ollies into my collection. I try to leave them hanging always uh, they're going to have a longer life and a better result if they're always hanging, but you don't always have space. And for a long time, these ones were rolled up. And, you know, you have to steam them and look after them. They really have a life of their own. When I think about the evolution of backdrops through the last 27 years, my studio had painted backdrops in the early 90s. And they sort of went out of fashion for a good 10, 15 years. And I think Annie Leibovitz really bought the painted backdrop back for everybody when she was doing those Vanity Fair portraits. Um, I definitely fell in love with them. Sarah actually paints Annie's backdrop. So that was another reason that I really wanted one in my studio. I have a beautiful brown gray. I have the dark blue charcoal and I have a gold, uh, definitely a sagey green gold. Those are the three tones that I really love. If they go out of fashion again, I will simply kill them up um, safely, put them in my studio, and I'm pretty sure by the time I hit my 60s, they'll be in fashion again. 
As you can see behind my table is my reveal wall. I sell all of my images uh, already printed and finished. I've been doing this for nearly four years. Uh, it came to me one night after watching the documentary September issue where they put September's Vogue issue up on the wall and I thought imagine if you could walk in and see your entire shoot. Um, I have put lights in just a row of spotlights just to illuminate the wall. Um, the word reveal came from Craig Swanson. Craig said really what you're doing is revealing you know your images to people and it's so funny how it's taken on. Um, I am lucky enough to be able to print my own images. If you look here, I have the Canon Pro 1000 and the Canon Pro 4000. The Canon Pro 4000 is 44 inches wide, so I can print all of my enlargements. The Canon Pro 1000 prints 17 by 20 inches wide and 22 inches, so that's what I can do my 1620s, and anything above that goes to the 4000. I just printed a series of 40 by 60 images for this large wall as you go into my studio behind the backdrops. This is a poem. This poem is one of my favorite poems. It's by Derek Walcott. So Derek is a poet and a literary professor at Michigan University. Um, this poem is about having your portrait taken. It's about falling in love with yourself. And the very first studio that I built when I had those beautiful big doors, I set this poem into the floor and you would walk into it. The time will come when with elation you will greet yourself arriving at your own door and it's about seeing yourself, it's about falling in love with yourself. Uh, you give back your heart to itself, to the stranger who has loved you all your life, whom you ignored for another. Sit and feast on your life. This line for me, take down the love letters from the bookshelf, the photographs, the desperate notes, peel your own image from the mirror. That's what a portrait is. It's to peel your own image from the mirror and to sit and feast on your life. It's when you see yourself and you feast and celebrate your life and who you are. That is the magic of what we do here. I want my clients to read it and I want them to be profoundly moved by it because that's what it means to me to see a portrait.